Hello and welcome to the Friday, February 23rd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Rachel Downs, one of our sans.edu interns, has contributed a real nice diary today looking at a good range of data probing for TCP port 502. TCP port 502 is used for Modbus and Modbus is an industrial control system protocol. Now, she did detect quite a bit of activity here, but then looked closer at where does the activity actually come from. And uh, to her surprise, she found that 89% of the scans originated from researchers. Uh, There were more than a dozen different research groups, I think about two dozen different research groups that uh, did scan her honeypot for port 502 TCP. This is something uh, that uh, we have talked about before. I've sometimes seen sort of the overall scan rate of like 30% uh, just uh, originating from these researchers. Couple problems with some of these researchers. First of all, they're not always easy identifiable as researchers. Also, not always clear who's actually behind the research, like what company, what organization or so is uh, behind it. And then some of them do not have a clear way to opt out of their scans. Putting aside some of the ethical questions about uh, scanning the internet uh, without really asking for permission, it should be sort of a minimum requirement that you at least offer some form to opt out and that you clearly identify who the scan originates from. And you probably already heard from the regular news that, well, uh, Thursday morning, AT&T had a major outage if not taking down their entire wireless network, at least taking down a good part of it. Service uh, was restored in the afternoon here uh, Eastern time. And uh, as I'm recording this in the evening, all service appears to be restored. This is a kind of an important reminder that uh, no service like this is perfect. You always need to account for downtime. So you need to have some kind of backup or so if you can't afford to go down uh, for a day. This is in particular important if you are using a cellular service like this uh, for security relevant uh, functions, like for example, alarm systems, surveillance cameras on remote sites or such, that at the very least you have some kind of backup plan. Well, you know, maybe you have to send someone past those sites to make sure everything is still okay, because in particular, If something like this is very public, bad actors may take advantage of it. There is, at this point, tons of speculation, but no actual statement from AT&T as to what the nature of the outage is. I hope over the next uh, couple days or weeks, uh, they'll uh, come forward with a little bit of post-mortem explaining what actually happened. Just yet another update on the ConnectWise Screen Connect issue. It's now actively being exploited by the LockBit ransomware. Yes, the same LockBit that was taken down a few days ago, but well, it's still active. ConnectWise also made patching a little bit easier. If you have an expired license, you're still able to patch your installation. So that's kind of uh, nice of them. There was some question on Twitter uh, because there are a Linux and a Mac version as well uh, of Screen Connect, but uh, there's no specific patch for them. They may or may not be vulnerable. That's something that uh, Connectwise still has to explain. Uh, the exploit is extremely simple to execute. One of the things to look for if you are running Screenwise is to look for any odd added users, because that would typically be what an attacker is doing with this vulnerability is add new administrative users. And that, of course, could potentially give away that your instance has been compromised. And then there are more compromises being reported using a tool called SH Snake. SH Snake is a very simple tool that uh, automates a process that attackers have often used before. Whenever 
it's compromising a system. It's then looking for secret Zage keys. It's also looking for entries in config files and such that may indicate what hosts a particular user can connect to. And then it's using the secret Zage keys it found to connect to these remote hosts where uh, the entire process repeats. Whenever you're using SSH keys, make sure you limit where they can connect to and from. And uh, also, if at all possible, try to protect them with a passphrase that may not always be easy if you're using some kind of a cron job or such that needs to have access uh, to these SSH keys. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and Talk to you again on Monday.